the Lagos Governors Tennis Championship. Yeah, yesterday I told you that Nigeria's uh, standing male player uh, crashed out of the tournament. Uh, the female one's not really living up to expectations also, but it's not a problem. Uh, the Lagos Governors Cup uh, reaches its uh, business end of the first leg. Uh, foreign professionals that are here, they don't, they are beating uh, uh, locally based players, but they are saying that with the level of tennis that they have seen, that they are impressed. Yes, despite no Nigerian making it to uh, the quarterfinals, they're saying, hmm, with the level, with, they're showing good signs. This, 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 this is really good. If they sustain the momentum, if they keep the consistency, if they play more tournaments, if the sports administrators invest more in tennis, then they know that if they come again for the Lagos Governors Cup, it will be very difficult to beat Nigerian players. They went on to say they believe that if the players continue to get the right exposure and functional facilities, Underlying facilities, very, very important. I showed Dico also mentioned it last night. That is part of what they presented to the NESG infrastructure. That, in fact, the government should have an infrastructure fund where they can go and make sure that facilities are top notch. I mean, you can't build a champion if you don't have the right equipment to do so. Uh, so, they say there's facilities uh, that Nigerians will dominate. Um, the Lagos Governor's Cup. That's a good one. Good chat to our administrators also. Uh, let's listen to uh, some of them speaking because we'll be monitoring these. Uh, then we'll come back. We'll talk some more. Don't go anywhere. The opportunities, I'm from South Africa and like the opportunities are kind of similar and it's, we don't like get a lot of opportunities or like compared to the rest of players in the world. So to see like them playing this level of tennis is like really amazing because it's literally, it's literally talent only and I mean if they had academies where they could train and they've got gymming and like proper facilities and stuff I mean they could actually be some real good players. I mean the level of tennis in France it's uh, totally different than Nigerian I mean in France we have like good players in, ja in Nigeria they are good but I think we we have like good installation there you know we have good courts we have good conditions you know and um, it's cool so here I think it's tough the condition here you know to practice to training hard like but I mean yeah they have to keep fighting that's that's the important they have to keep fighting so that's it, Johan, uh, uh, despite the harsh conditions, uh, the foreign players are still winning because they have been cooked. Their foundation is good. They've done everything that they can so that uh, when they play out of their country, they can still keep that top-notch performance. And that's what we're hoping that our Nigerian players will start doing. Let's talk about uh, the Nigerian Women's Premier League Super 4 uh, taking place right there in Benin City, Edo State. Update for you, information that you can use. The final will be between Delta Queens and Nassau Amazons. Uh, did you see that coming? That when Rivers Angels, Bayelsa Queens, Delta Queens and Nassau Amazons started getting ready for the Super 4, did you see that it's going to be Delta Queens and Nassau Amazons playing? In the final of the Super 4, women's football is getting bigger in Nigeria. The three results for your confirmation right there. Uh, Delta Queens and Nasra Amazons played 2-2. Uh, fantastic game of football. They, they entertained uh, the spectators right there. Rivers Angels, uh, they were poised to get some points. They were poised to win. Uh, but then their goal is against Bayosa Queens. So that tells you that uh, women's football is taking some shape. So th that's what the table looks like before the final. The final of the final, where we'll get the champion on Friday. Confirmation of the final fixture for you. The Otter Queens, we play Nasara Amazons right there at the Samuel Obemudia Stadium in Benin City, Edo State. We'll continue to also uh, monitor that one. It sounds good. Let's just quickly take this news before uh, we move to Washington, D.C. So fasten your seatbelt because we're going to fly very soon. Abia Warriors, they have confirmed uh, the appointment of former FC Ifia Uba coach. Rafael Everton, remember Rafael Everton? Yes, he came and then he left uh, as they've confirmed him as the new manager for the upcoming league season. They mean business. The Brazilian tactician has been mandated to help the club earn a continental ticket or win the league title. Hmm. Can Everton give up their Warriors the league title? Everton guided FC Ferroba to their first major silverware when they won the 2016 Federation Cup. Now we're getting ready for... Um, 
the ITO Cup final. The last time was the Federation Cup. FC Fairyba won it. Let's go to Washington, D.C. It's a spot flight. Sonny Young is standing by right there to join us on the show. Sonny, if you're ready, uh, good to have you. Sonny, fantastic. I, I'm glad you're smiling. Sonny, uh, good to have you on sports tonight. It's great to be back on sports tonight, Austin. I am sort of licking my wounds a little bit after that performance by the USA in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, that definitely was one of the big headlines over the past few days, Austin. Uh, just uh, an atrocious, terrible performance okay, leave by it. the Americans. So, Sonny, uh, keep, the, keep the adjectives. Come on, I'll give you a good start, Sonny. I'll give you <laughs> well, a good start. I'll, I'll you, give you a few more adjectives. No, you know, Sonny, no, no, drop, drop it, drop it. Sonny, let's show some love to the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Though you got the prediction wrong, uh, but it was good to see the Super Eagles beat Zambia and qualify for the World Cup. I'll give you a good start. Yeah, I was happy to see the Super Eagles uh, emerge victorious, and they're going to Russia. If my math is correct, Austin, I think that's the sixth, that's sixth right. World Cup mm. appearance mm. for the Super Eagles. So congratulations to the Super Eagles. Uh, shout out for Alex Iwobi Yay. The, uh, the, for Arsenal. He's been playing very well, Austin, for the Super Eagles and, and for Arsenal, for that matter. I know... Uh, he had the goal against Zambia, and uh, no, I, I think I think the Super Eagles have a lot to be proud of, and more so than the United States. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and they're uh, they're going to Russia. I mean, that, that's, I, I that's, know, that's huge. Sammy, I'm not I'm not rushing into the United States talk. Uh, Alex Iwobi, just to let you know, he lost scoring against Zambia. Uh, October the 10th, 2016, Nigeria started at the World Cup qualifying campaign. It was right then in Dola. Alex, you will be scored in that one. Uh, we were thinking he wasn't going to play in his second leg. He came on Sunday and he gave Nigeria the ticket to the World Cup. Yeah, shout out for Alex Iwobi. Uh, you know, I keep seeing his name popping up on the score lines now. So he's <laughs> clearly producing mm. for the Super Eagles. Uh, I think at this point, Austin, it's all about preparation mm. uh, ahead of Russia for the Super Eagles. And I, I know a lot of Nigerians are wondering which group or what other teams will be, you know, with them in Russia, you know, in that first round grouping. Mm. Uh, quick shout outs for a couple of debutantes. Wow. Iceland and Ice Panama. Wow. Making it, to, making it for the first time. Let me make it very difficult for you now, Sonny. Iceland, Panama going to the World Cup. In fact, Syria was even closed. No United States of America. That loss to Trinidad and Tobago, Sonny, how embarrassing was it? That's the word right there, Austin, embarrassing. In fact, a lot of people are saying it's the most embarrassing loss in U.S. soccer history. They were heavily favored to hmm. beat Trinidad and Tobago, Austin, and to book their ticket to Russia. They needed only a draw against Trinidad, and they look slow, they look lethargic. It, it, I was stunned. I, 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 you, you'd never know that a ticket to Russia was on the line, Austin, the way they played against Trinidad, the last place team in their qualifying group, <laughs> Trinidad and Tobago. So, yeah, an embarrassment for U.S. soccer. So we can, we ha we'll have to wait now till uh, 2022, I guess, Austin. Wow. And even then, there's no, there's no guarantee when it comes to the World Cup. I know. Son, like, you, you're really doing well trying to analyze that loss to Trinidad and Tobago. I mean, I, I would have been upset that you would be doing this if it was Nigeria. But, but Sonny, when Bruce Arena came on board, we started seeing some changes. What really happened? Does this now mean we're going to be seeing some likely changes? Changes are imminent, Austin. I think Bruce Arena is probably uh, checking his resume right now because I, I, I think his days are numbered clearly. He was hired with the specific task to get the USA to Russia. They failed in that task. So I think they will bring in a new coach. There's, there's also talk that they might replace the president of the U.S. Soccer Federation, mm. Sunil Gulati. Could be wholesale changes, Austin. Wow. Uh, from a financial standpoint, Austin. Tell me about the it. The Super Eagles of Nigeria, just for qualifying, they will receive from FIFA the world football governing body, they're going to receive more than a million dollars. I think at the last World Cup in Brazil, 
the USA received uh, $1.5 million for qualifying, and then they received a bonus for making it to the round of 16 of $9 million. So the U.S. Soccer Federation got more than $10 million at the last World Cup in Brazil. Uh, the financial aspect from the broadcasting rights, uh, Fox Television paid an estimated half a billion dollars to broadcast the World Cup here in the United States, Austin. They're saying without the USA taking part, the, the ratings are going to suffer. Ooh. So it's really, you know, there, it, there's going to be some long-term impact. I know, Sonny, losses, losses, big-time losses you're mentioning. Sonny, don't, don't go anywhere. I'll come back to you because I'm sure youth football will also suffer. We'll talk about our sports tonight on Channels Television. Let's go on this quick break. When we come back, we'll go back to Washington, D.C. Sonny's standing by. Don't go anywhere. Stay.